Hi folks, this is Margie Roy from 3dcuts.com and this is the tutorial for my 3D shadow box featuring three deer. This shadow box is the same size and series as my summer scenes, Heron Cove, Springtime Robins. There are a whole series of these that you can make and display together. Let's get started. I have cut all of the pieces out on my cutting machine. I have included some hints on cutting out small pieces like this in the tutorial at my website, 3dcuts.com. The link is in this video, and you should also look at that tutorial as well as watching this video. There are hints there that I can't include here. So I've cut all the parts out. What I'm going to start by doing is noticing that there are numbers in each of the layers. That'll help me with assembly. I'm going to get rid of all of the small pieces and just deal with the frames first. Frame number four, dotted lines for folding on. Frame four, everything gets folded to the front. On my shadow boxes, the number is always in the upper left-hand corner to help you understand placement. I'm not going to glue these. Now frames one, two, and three all get folded to the back. Okay, let's start with layer two. It has the two deer on it. I'm going to find the other two deer that match it. These get glued right on top of the ones that are in the frame. It gives us a little more dimension, but it also adds important strength. What I do is I use art glitter glue because it dries without a sheen and it's got this wonderful metal tip. I'm going to take this one, fold it or flip it over, and just add a little bit of glue to the back of it. Now all of that will dry clear and none of the white will show and that just gives added strength to this very important area. The same happens on the front side of layer number three with the buck. Those can be put aside to dry. This shadow box is created by building layers on each of these internal layers. On the number two layer, there is a piece that gets put in the background to attach the little back deer hoofs to. There is a pine tree, a pine tree that gets placed in the back corner and there is a row of grass that gets placed on the front. We'll start with the row of grass. On the back side of it, I'm going to put a row of pop dots. That'll give it one more layer of dimension. Although there are only two internal layers on this shadow box, it appears to have many more layers because of the things that I add onto the layers using pop dots. The corners of this will line up with these corners here, press in place. On the back side of layer two, and you know it's the back side because the number is up here, this will get positioned in this corner and this will get positioned on top of it each lines up in this corner. So I will take the piece of land, turn it over. I'll put the pop dots on this side. Let me make sure. So that I'm sure that they do not show from the front. The white pop dots really scream out if you let them be in a visible location on these black silhouettes. So be careful with your placement.
Okay, the little three back hoofs are going to be glued to that so they don't look like they're floating in space. Get just a tiny bit of glue on each of them. And hold them, come back to it every so often to make sure they stay there. Meanwhile, this pine tree will get positioned back here. So let's put some pop dots on its base. And lining up the corners. It might have been easier had I formed this before doing this. Uh, I debated that. Okay, we now have one, two, three, four different layers all within one layer of our shadow box. I am going to take this pine tree and just attach it here to give it some strength in the upper portion on the back side. That finishes the prep on layer two. Let's move on to layer three. Put that one to the side so it can dry. I am going to build layer three for, first to help me with the positioning of these pine trees. For layer three, it's an internal layer, so the corners are held in place by the outside layers. I just use one quick pop dot in each corner to hold these while I'm working. Excuse me, not pop dots, glue dots. There is number three together. The pine trees are going to go in on the back side and fit in this corner here. I'm going to put the pop dots on the back. Slide that piece into the corner and press in place. Also on layer three, we're going to put a couple of little ferns down low to shoot in this way. There are a lot of ferns. It doesn't really matter which ones you use in which location. You want to keep the base down low so that you don't see it. We can just affix the bases here and then curl them forward later. So I'll take some glue on these. Make sure that I get them low enough so that they do not show in front of the land on lay, above the land on layer number two. Tilt that one a little bit, I think. And I'll do more for, with them once the piece is together. Okay, layer number three is now together. Layer number one has the birch tree attached to its back side, plus a lot of ferns in the lower two corners. The birch tree will get put on on the back side I do believe I'm going to build this one before I put it in. For layers one and four, I use score tape. These layers are structurally important to the overall design, and so I like score tape as a better adhesive here. I put two pieces of score tape on every corner. the number one frame the 
birch tree will fit into this corner and get tacked down up here as well. I will again use pop dots. And now I will position some pop dots right in against the fold, one on the side and a couple here on the top to, to provide some strength to the birch tree. Ferns will get positioned in both of the corners, but I'm going to wait until I've got it together so that I understand placement and I don't hide the deer. So. Let's take layer two. This one is again an internal layer, so I will use glue dots in each of the corners to hold it together. Let's put layer four together. Again, this one I will use the score tape for. Layer four is the background and into layer four goes whatever you have decided to be the sky water. I have printed up a design that I made using Illustrator. But in these shadow boxes, I have taken photographs of skies, I have used uh, watercolor washes, I have done some spray paint washes. I've made all different kinds of paper that I've used for these. I've even just gotten some graded, gradated purchased paper or cloud paper that I've used. Be creative, make a background for your shadow box. You should cut it to be a little under six and a quarter by six and a quarter so it fits inside the box. On this particular one, you want the horizon to be about three inches down from the top. That is to allow for good placement of the other pieces. This is going to be spray glued into the back. I'll put spray glue here and attach it, and then I will glue this on as well. There, I just applied spray glue to it, put it in place, press it down. And I'll just put art glitter glue on the back of this one. Now it's time to start assembling the layers. You will start with layers two and three and attach those two together first. For this, I use scotch tape. Layer two will go over layer three. I'll turn it over. I will take about a three inch piece of scotch tape. I will carefully line up the two back edges Put scotch tape in the center of it, line up those back edges, flip it over, and tape in place. Do this on all four sides. It gets easier with each side that you do. I'm gonna go to the opposite side. Make sure that the back edges line up There's layer two and three. Levels two and three now get placed inside level four. For this I use score tape and I cut a piece about two and a half to three inches long and I place it in the center of each side of the combined levels two and three. I put it near the front of that level.
You can then take your levels two and three and put them inside layer four. I then take needle nose tweezers and I grab the score tape and peel it out. Press it into place. Repeat on all four sides. If you are going to want to hang your shadow box, you would now insert the hanger. This is optional. You fold it, you add some score tape, On the top side of layer one, this gets centered on the top and placed right in there, like so. That'll provide a hanger. You can now put layer one over layers four, two, three, and four. It is a close fit. Ah, oh, this is getting to be really interesting, but we do need our ferns here. These little guys have big tabs at the bottom, which you're going to glue down behind here. It is easier to do if it's apart. You want to understand that you do not want the ferns to cover the deer here. Over here, you have more freedom. You can cut those little tabs to any shape that works, and certainly, there is no correct way to put these on. It's all up to what you want to do. So I'm going to take that off and I want the ferns to start on the inside, but then go to the outside. So if I were to put that one there, I'd cut this off so it doesn't show. I'll do that. Start on the inside, go to the outside and extend beyond the frame. Let's put some glue on it and glue it in place. There's the first one. I'm going to probably put about five in this corner and three in this corner. going to take a round tool and curl some of these forward. And then let's put it on top and see if we like it. I do. So I'm now going to attach, attach layer one to layer four. To do this, on layer four, put a piece of score tape in the center of each side, about that long, two and a half, three inches. This time you will position it toward the back of the shadow box.
turn it over. Be careful of those ferns. Take your tweezers and peel the score tape backing off and glue each side in place. Wow, isn't that stunning? Thanks for watching and happy crafting everyone!